This is a special specimen. I originally built this back when I was 13 years old in the fourth grade in the year 2004. What do you think it is? You see, it's an old metal band aid box. It has a push button, a spare wire here, and an antenna. Now, there could be a number of conjectures as to what this might be. One might think it's a radio. Maybe it's got the antenna and maybe this wire, even suggested by the green color, might go for grounding, such as a AM antenna. Maybe the button is simply an on and off switch or something. But no, it's not a radio. It's got two screws on the bottom of the unit. And it's, um, this is not all original parts right now. I just restored it. Um, uh, just probably about an hour ago or half an hour ago I just restored it. All I needed to do to restore it was put a new power source inside it because the old one had long since gone dead. But what do you think it is? It's a shocking device. Back in the seventh grade I built some shocking devices and I would bring a shocker to school and shock kids with them and of course I'd get in trouble. Oh, excuse me, but anyway, the old Band-Aid chalking device is a very simple design. It simply uses the principle of inductive kickback. Because an inductor does not want to, or because a current cannot change instantaneously, when you have power applied to inductor, the moment you take the power off, it, the current wants to go somewhere, so it creates a high voltage spike which normally would try to jump the contacts of the switch but whenever you have these two terminals across the human body such as you touching your hand on it like this it jumps through your hand as a high voltage spike and gives a nice quick pulse shock the added bonus of that is that whenever you push the button you don't feel a shock but once you release the button that's when the shock happens um, the principle of inductive kickback has been known about for many years. I actually came across, I actually found out about it by accident originally when I was playing around with the transformer and a battery years ago and was, I think the idea was to see if I could get any high voltage out of the secondary of the transformer even though I knew DC wouldn't work with it. I thought maybe a pulse could send through or something like that. But anyway, as I was touching the wires to the battery with my fingers to hold them in place, I let go of the battery but held the transformer wires and I felt a nice jolt of electricity. So from that, I learned I could make a shocking device out of it. Now this is the original 9-volt battery I had put in in 2004. Um, but it has long since gone dead. I used to have it. It was actually mounted in a two AA battery holder taped in place and pushed against the springs, even soldered, but that had since come off. So I have a little battery pack in here now that I just put in today. It's supposed to hold three AA's. I just got two AA's in there and it doesn't really matter whether it's three volts or nine volts that's running it. It still gets a good shock. And down in there, you might barely be able to see a little transformer. It's actually only got a single winding, so it's just a choke. But it doesn't have to have a secondary. It just needs a single winding. I think it was a ballast. It came out of an old exit sign that was being thrown away back in the sixth grade. And the teacher let me have the exit sign. and had a couple of these ballast transformers in it. One of them was open. The other one was good. And the good one I used on the shocking device. So I have a couple of old double A's in here which came out of a Wii controller which were, or a GameCube controller which were already um, too low to run the GameCube controller but good enough to run the shocker. Simple electrical wiring. I just added this electrical tape just now to insulate this. Um, the antenna is flimsy but it does do the trick. So now I want to give a demonstration on myself, shocking myself. I'm going to hold the wire and then press my finger against 
Notice electricity has to flow through my body, and I'm going to shock myself. Just in time for the video, I feel absolutely nothing. It could be the battery connections failing again. There was some corrosion in that battery compartment. Probably the fact that I opened it to show it meant it would mess up. Oh, there it goes. Okay, let's try it again. It always likes to not work when it's closed sometimes for some reason. It's stupid. Open it, it works just fine. Close it, it doesn't work. It's retarded. So let me try again here. I had it working with it closed earlier. There it goes. Not very strong though. It's stronger when it's open. Are you recording on your phone? Yes. Oh. Um, which is incredibly annoying the fact that Murphy's Law is making it not work so good when it's closed just in time for the video. Are you going to put that on YouTube? Yes. Okay, it's working now. And I can feel it. Feel the jolt. I don't know if I'll be able to show it twitch any muscles or not. I feel a slight sting along with the pulse. Try down here. Now, I don't know how many volts it is. The pulse is probably too quick to be able to measure. Oh, here's an interesting spot. <laughs> that part actually hurts. I don't think you'll be able to see any muscle twitches, but I can feel my muscle. It feels like my muscles twitching when I do it. <clears throat> so anyway, it's a nice little portable uh, band-aid chalking device, and I hope you enjoyed my little video on it. <laughs>